Tesla CEO Elon Musk tweeted a surprising revelation that sent investors into a tizzy. He wrote, I'm considering taking Tesla private at $420, funding secured. Over the last year, Musk and Tesla have been facing greater scrutiny from investors and analysts as the company burns through cash and struggles to meet production targets. But is going private a real possibility? For more, I want to bring in Bloomberg Tech's executive editor, Tom Giles, here in San Francisco and in New York. We have Ivan Feinseth, chief investment officer at Tigris Financial Partners. So, Ivan, what's your reaction to this? Well, one of the incredible things about somebody as brilliant as Elon Musk, I think he tends to be a little impulsive. Uh, going private at that level really wouldn't make sense for a number of reasons. Uh, the company needs funding to grow, and to go private at and, uh, $420 a share would probably be a total of $72 billion, less the about $14 billion that Elon Musk has. He would probably have to finance around $58 billion, even in rates in the low tween, teens, let's say 12.5%, would be about $7.1 billion in interest every year. And even though he projects to be cash flow positive by the end of this year, that would not be enough cash to pay the debt. More importantly, he needs to raise $2 billion to build his new China factory. He's going to need to raise additional money to build the semi-truck. So when you need to raise money, going private would not make sense. So we have to take this seriously as a public company CEO. But Tom, if this was April, I would say, is this an April Fool's joke? And People are saying, is this a pot joke? Uh, 420. 420, <laughs> you know, it's not April, but he's, like, he's made jokes before. He loves to burn the shorts. He talks about it all the time. Is that legal? How for a much, public company CEO to do this how, during trading hours. How much sympathy is, is the SEC going to have for hedge funds? Are okay. we really worried about, about you know, are we, we, we going to have a lot of sympathy for the hedge funds? It's a question. Um, do we know how serious he is? Let's put it that way. We know. So I was in an interview with Elon Musk three years ago where he talked about the virtue of being a private company, his regrets about having taken Tesla public. Uh, Dana Hall and I, who covers Tesla, we're in the interview. We talked about, you know, how much more he prefers to run a company like SpaceX, he's also got this privately held company where it's outside the public scrutiny, it's outside the whims and the, and the wishes of shareholders and Wall Street analysts every three months. Am I making the production targets? Am I hitting my cash flow targets? Am I hitting my profit targets? You get out of that for a while, that has an appeal. Remember, Michael Dell took Dell private several years ago. Right, and, and everybody, huge transaction. And everybody who, every, every chance he got, he raved about the virtues of being private. Oh, I love this so much more, being outside the public, uh, public markets, outside the scrutiny. But then again, he amassed a lot of debt. Ivan talked about this uh, uh, just before me. Dell amassed all this debt, needed a way to finance it, and so he's gone back. He's going back to the public markets. He's, it's a complicated mechanism, but you know the grass is always greener. So Musk is going with it. He's responded to another Twitter user saying, "My hope is all current investors remain with Tesla, even if we're private. Would create special purpose fund enabling anyone to stay with Tesla." already do this with Fidelity's SpaceX investment. So, Ivan, you're saying it's not necessarily even possible. Well, it's possible. It's not unusual to finance deals those si that size. Deals have been done bigger. But one, it doesn't economically make sense for him. And two, in the stage that the company is in, uh, it doesn't make sense because he's in a growth stage. He's not in a mature stage. Companies go private that are usually in a mature stage and they are generating significant cash, but the shares usually are not getting a valuation that shows the value of their cash generation. He needs the public markets for financing. I mean, it would be easier to raise financing in both equity and debt for him if he's a public company. And of course, now, if the company wasn't public, we, we'd miss all the fun we have following Elon Musk. Uh, shares have already been up uh, after a, a report from the Financial Times that the Saudi Investment Authority has built up a big stake, 3 to 5 percent. Does that give Musk some more comfort here or some wiggle room? Well, the more that he would have other equity investors willing to commit their equity to his going private transaction would help. But um, 
Uh, I still don't think uh, in the long run it benefits the company. Also, you need to be a co public company in his situation so he can attract and compensate key employees with the use of stock. Tom, what else are we watching here? We're trying to find out who these other, where is this secured financing coming from, you know, that he talks about. He, we do have to take him seriously until proven otherwise. Who are the other big shareholders who come to mind, who have a lot of money in, you know, and are looking to, for ways to deploy it, and who have a lot of patience? Someone who comes to mind, obviously, is SoftBank. We know Google tried to buy Tesla at one point, way back, way back when. Um, Apple is often seen as a potential acquirer. D are there enough of these parties out there who could get in bed together? And remember who helped uh, who helped Des uh, uh, Dell, and that was Silver Lake. So we've got a lot of lines out to find out exactly where this financing, if it's real, is coming from. A lot of money and a lot of patience. Sounds like the perfect Tesla investor. Tom Giles, our Bloomberg Tech Executive Editor, thanks so much. Ivan Feinseth at Tigers Financial Partners, thank you so much for hustling over here to give us your thoughts.